Good morning, folks. We're changing up our order a little bit this morning. We're not starting early, but we're moving this congregation song into the 10 to 10.30 slot, and then Bob will do the welcome at 10.30, and that'll be our official start. So y'all stand this morning, and let's sing Victory in Jesus. That'll kind of give everybody the signal to come on in and pull up a seat. Story how the Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood atoning, and I repented of my sin and won the victory. All right, everybody, oh, victory in Jesus, I say. about his healing of his cleansing our revealing how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory oh victory in Jesus I say me ere I knew and all my love is through he plunged me to victory he flood I heard about that rich he has built for me in glory and I heard about the streams of gold beyond the crystal sea without the angel singing and the old Redemption story. Some sweet day I'll sing a song. All right, y'all do that Jimmy Fortune deal. Victory in Jesus, my Savior for it. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is through. He plunged me. glad to welcome you this morning. Glad you're here. Uh, I, I don't want to take a lot of time. Uh, we have visitors this morning, first time people, uh, second or third time people, uh, people who are back uh, after uh, a sabbatical. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Look at the announcements and I'm not going to go over all of those because you can read as well as I can or better. But this helps you uh, know kind of what's going on, I think. Uh, we do have movie night tonight. Uh, we're going to watch a movie over in the barn, over in the barn, popcorn and a movie. Now I got to tell you guys, it's a kiss and smooch movie, but it, <laughs> and it, but it's good, yeah. Uh, it's one of those romantic movies, but it's a Christian movie, of course. Uh, the title of it is I Still Believe. Uh, I Still Believe. And I've watched uh, as much as I could and then the 
uh, DVD malfunctioned and I didn't get to watch the rest of it, but it's, I, it'll touch your heart. Uh, you might ought to bring a Kleenex. Uh, but we're glad uh, you're here tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll be in the barn. We'll have popcorn. We'll have a movie. Uh, you'll be inspired. You'll be lifted up. You won't hear uh, one thing about COVID. You won't hear one thing about uh, politics. You won't hear anything that will take you down. You're going to be lifted up. And so, hope you'll come. God bless you. Band, are you ready? Three men on a mountain Up on Calvary And the man in the middle of Jesus He died for you and me now the man on the right was a sinner man Tied to a cross he bled He could have been forgiven But he mocked our Lord instead Now you say you are the Son of God They nailed you to that tree Come down, come down and save us If God your Father be There's three men on the mountain up on Calvary, and the man in the middle was Jesus, and he died for you and me, Brother Mike. The man on the left was a sinner too He was sorry for his sin And he begged the Lord's forgiveness And Jesus said to him Fear not, fear not, this is the day And before this day is o'er You'll be with me in paradise On heaven's golden shore There's three men on a mountain up on Calvary, and the man in the middle was Jesus, he died for you and me. Yes, there's three men on a mountain. Up on Calvary, and the man in the middle was Jesus, he died for you and me.
children if you want to head off to Sunday school you can do that your teachers are breathlessly awaiting your arrival out of pure fear usually <laughs> we're awfully glad you're here people keep coming in seats keep filling up so that's good that's good Joe I'm going to ask you to pray in just a minute uh, because we won't have a regular prayer time because we have baptism. Uh, Pat, would you and your family come up this way? Elders, if you'll make your way up here and help out if you're needed. Uh, Pat knows her way, I think, back there. Uh, here's, here's the prayer list this morning. Francis Zetchi has cancer, still waiting on the doctor to decide on the MRI and, and the doctor to decide what needs to happen. Kirk Sparkman uh, lives south of uh, Frio, uh, has for years uh, ran that feedlot south of, south of Frio, uh, but he's got cancer, not only of the kidney, but the liver and the lung. Amazingly, now think about this, about a year ago, Kirk's life turned totally around. And he began, even while the church was closed, he was having church for those feedlot cowboys. He was having church at his house, Amen. preaching to those guys a year ago. And then you got to wonder why, after a guy's life is turned around, why does this happen? Nobody knows. We don't have an answer for that. Kendra McDaniels did pass away. That's David's re request from last week. But uh, Steve still needs prayers. Tex told me he got a call from a couple of ladies who were on the trip to Israel back last January. And they, they're from North Carolina. And they called him, texted him and said, have your church pray for, they're going to the malls and they're, they're praying some of those Christian ladies are praying for other ladies in, at the mall, and they're, they're calling it Moms Praying for Moms. So uh, that's good. They ask us to pray for them. Leslie Osborne uh, has recovered from uh, COVID, but still has no energy, and I, we understand that. Kendall Osborne uh, asks us to pray. Renee asks us to pray for Priscilla Martinez, She's on a vent in Northwest Texas with COVID. Uh, Christy Bolander, this is Christy right there, has asked us to pray for Kimberly Hindley, who has cancer and is doing chemo. That's a tough road to travel. And then Steve Taylor, Russell and Stephanie McIneers asked that we pray for Steve Taylor. He has COVID and uh, his liver and kidney kidneys are failing. So there's a lot to pray for. And so, Joe, I'm going to loan you this list, and I'll ask you to voice prayer. That's all right. Uh, I won't. Uh, okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you that for this time when we can come before you, Lord. Uh, as usual, Lord, we want to thank you for the blessings you give us, Lord, uh, first. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the rain that's falling around. Uh, it's so, so uh, needed. Lord, 
And uh, we just thank you for the blessings you can continue to give us. Lord, we thank you for the one that's being baptized today. What a blessing. I know the angels in heaven are, are excited and, and cheering, Lord, and another one coming into your fold, Lord. So we thank you for that. Lord, I want to pray for those that were all those names here. I'll, I'll mess it up if I try to go through them all, Lord, but you heard them. You know who they are. And you know what they need, Lord. So we, we lift all these up to you, Lord. And I'm sure there's a lot of unspoken ones here. And, Lord, I want to pray for our country. Yes. <clears throat> Been reading in the Old Testament. And the United States is acting just like the people of Israel. Right. We were uh, we're worshiping false gods. Putting our faith in other things besides you, Lord. So, Lord, I pray for our leaders all the way down to the men in the families and the women. That's where it starts, Lord. So, Lord, I lift them up to you. Uh, I pray for strength. I pray for wisdom. Uh, and James, you had told us that we could ask for wisdom and you'll give it to us. I, I don't know about COVID. I don't know about wearing masks. I don't know about vaccines. I don't know any of that stuff. But I do know you have a plan for us, Lord. So yes, yes. I pray for your guidance in each and every life. I thank you for the visitors that are here, Lord. I thank you for the ones who've come back, who've been gone for a while. I thank you for that, Lord. Yes. Uh, we just can't give yeah. anybody the credit but you, Lord. A lot of things going on in this church, a lot of, a lot of activities, a lot of building things, a movie tonight, Lord. I just pray your blessing upon all of that. Pray you be with the leaders of this church, Lord, that we'll always go in the direction you'd have us to go. And the way you've blessed this church, pray that we'll just use it to advance your kingdom, Lord. Once again, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time when we can come to worship you. And I lift up Brother Bob and the message he brings this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, <clears throat> Joe. Pat, would you come? Uh, and the elders, you come and help out, help Pat Make sure she gets in the tub. Uh, I want my feet in because my feet are frozen. <laughs> oh, well, it, <laughs> yeah, it'll be perfect if you uh, want to be boiled in oil. I think. <laughs> oh, well, that, doesn't that feels pretty good. Oh, yeah. Let me introduce. Uh, hear that. <laughs> let me introduce Pat's family. This is T.J. and uh, Christy. Maisie. Maisie. I like that. Macy, how are you? Maisie. Yeah. I love that name. I love that name. You're cute as a bug. <laughs> Pat. Looks like her grandma. <laughs> uh, yeah, she does. She does. Pat uh, Bolander moved from here from Colorado six months ago or more? Eight months. Eight months ago. And uh, right away, Pat said, I'd like to be a member of this church. I said, we, let's visit. And we visit. We, I visited with a family this morning uh, from Logan, actually, and now happy. Uh, and uh, we'll be introducing them as new members pretty soon. But uh, I asked Pat about her relationship to Christ. When did you, or not, I don't mean a date, but how old were you when you came to know Christ, Pat? Nine. Nine years old. What church? Nazarene. The Nazarene Church. And in Colorado. Carmel, you, Colorado. Carthel? Carville. Carville, Colorado. That's a big town. 200 people. Yeah. Uh, I lived in Colorado, but uh, uh, I was kind of in a metropolis there, Westcliff. Uh, yeah. Uh, Pat has no doubt at all about her relationship to Christ. But at the time uh, of your relationship to Christ, as it began, you were sprinkled. Methodist. In the Methodist church, not baptized. And so I said to Pat, as we talked about membership here, I said, now, you, you can come to this church and we'll love you and you won't know whether you're a member or whether you're not because we're going to love you and accept you and treat you the same. But she said, I, and I, but I said, if you're willing, the one thing that we would require is baptism by immersion. And she said, I think I'm willing to do that. I'll get back with you. And that was several weeks ago, several months, mm -hmm. and a couple COVID. of Sundays, yeah, <laughs> COVID and all that, okay, but s s uh, maybe two weeks ago, I think, or so, mm -hmm. she said, I'm ready, and I, it caught me off guard. I said, ready for what? <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm ready to be baptized, 
There's no doubt. Uh, I, I want you to understand that. She came to know Christ at nine. This is not a, 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 but it is her profession of faith by being baptized. We always, when we're baptized, we profess our faith in Christ. Under the water, signifying death to an old way of life. Raised out of the water to walk a new way of life. Just that simple. And it's a physical thing Jesus gave us so that we could see it from Sunday to Sunday. And next, in a couple of weeks, we're going to observe the Lord's Supper. Another thing Jesus gave us. Because he knew that we might need something physical to see and to hang on to. So, Pat... We baptize you today as our sister. Why don't you be seated? These guys will help you. You all right? I am. Okay. Pat, upon your profession of faith in Christ. Now that occurred at nine. Nine-year-old girl giving her heart to Christ. But again today, as not much older than that, <laughs> right now, but again reiterating the fact that you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to you. Because of that, we baptize you as our sister in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. I'm getting confused here. family. We'll love you. Thank you. Tell me one more time about Jesus. All about forgiveness and praise. Tell me one more time about Jesus. All about Savior's face Here comes my old friend The preacher He's knocking at my front door He's out trying to save All the sinners Been here so many times before. I love the easy conversation. Man, that preacher sure can talk. Brings up my knees. For salvation Even though he knows I'm stubborn To a fall Tell me one more time About Jesus All about forgiveness Grace Tell me one more time about Jesus. All about my Savior's name.
I walk by the church on Sunday morning. I slipped on in the back road. It's sure been a long time coming. Tell me, preacher. What I need to know His words were like a cool drink of water He said, sinners, come on down the aisle So I went running for the altar Should have seen my old friend, the preacher smile. Tell me one more time about Jesus. All about forgiveness and grace. Tell me one more time. to see my Savior's face. I long to see my Savior's face. January's always bitter And Lord, this one beats all The wind ain't quit for days now The drifts are ten feet tall I've been all night driving heifers Closer in the lower ground Then I spent the morning thinking About the ones the wolves pulled down Charlie Barton and his family Stopped today to say goodbye Said the bank was taking over The last few years were just too dry And I promised that I'd visit When they found a place in town Then I spent a long time thinking About the ones who won't pulled down Lord please shine the light of hope on those of us who fall behind and when up while there's still time I don't mean to be complaining Lord you've always seen me through and I know you've got your reasons for each and everything you do But tonight outside my window There's a lonesome mournful sound 
And I can't just keep thinking, thinking About the ones the wolves pulled down Oh, Lord, keep me from being The one the wolves pulled down A lot of truth, a lot of truth. As pastor of a church, I can tell you that I could maybe introduce you to a lot of people uh, over the years that started well but finished badly. It seemed like the wolves pulled them down. James 1. 19, the, God, uh, the epistle of James 1, 19, if you'd, and are, are able to stand, if you'd stand with us, please, we're going to read 19 through 26, my dearly beloved brothers, understand this, everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For a man's anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding yourself of moral filth and evil, humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save you. But be doers of the word. I, I thought when I put the title to this message, I thought of you looking there and saying, Hearers and doers. Doers. Oh, doers. And I thought, there's no other way to spell that except the way it's spelled. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and preserves it and is not a forgetful hearer but one who does good works, this person will be blessed in what he does. If anyone thinks he's religious without controlling his tongue, then his religion is useless and he deceives himself. Pure and undefiled religion before our God and Father is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. You may be seated. So much is said in the book of James in such a little time, but I'm going to try to give you four topics, and I'm not going to dwell on any of them very long, but I do have two things that I want to share with you this morning uh, that I've run across in my, in my files. You know, the one thing that you can't do on a computer is go back through your files really easy. At least I can't. But I've got uh, two or three big file cabinets in my garage full of sermon notes and, uh, <coughs> and notes that I've taken. And I've got one and a half in here. And every once in a while I just flip through those things and something invariably comes up, so I'll give you those in a little bit. We've been talking about trials. James says trials are good for you, that trials prove that you have faith. And a lot of people aren't sure they, they really do have faith until the trial comes, until hard times come. Then you begin to understand that what you've got in the Lord Jesus Christ is really real, or you figure out that what you had or thought you had wasn't real at all. But it takes the trial. It takes that tough time. And when the tough times come, tough people keep going. When tough times come, weak people stop. And there have been times. Uh, my mother and dad helped me so much. 
I've told you that I was an excellent basketball player who sat on the bench an awful lot. And every once in a while I'd come in after a game, I'd say, I'm quitting. I'm turning in my uniform. You know that old, I'm turning in the uniform. And my mother and dad would say, you can't quit. Stick it out. You look good over there on the bench. You're cute. <laughs> and they told me I had nice legs. <laughs> so I stuck it out. Let me give you three qualities while you're in the trial. One, you need to be swift to hear. You need to be a quick listener, a quick study. You need to read God's Word every day. You need to pray all the time. The Bible says pray without ceasing. You need to learn and you need to be swift to hear. I hope you'll be swift to hear today. I hope you'll be slow to speak. Every time... I've shot my mouth off, as the old saying goes. I've had to apologize. I've, I've said this over and over. I have never had to apologize for something I didn't say. I've never had to apologize for something I didn't say. And so, uh, unless it was a truth that I should have said and didn't, and I'm not sometimes smart enough to know the difference there. So, swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Now, that word wrath doesn't mean that quick anger like some of us have, you know, uh, you're driving along, minding your own business, and somebody cuts you off, and you get on that horn, and uh, uh, that's what I'm talking about. That's not the kind of wrath. The wrath that this is talking about is a deep internal resentment, a simmering pot of rage or anger. Some of you live with that every day. Somebody's hurt you, you can't get over it. And you've got just a simmering pot of rage in your spirit. That needs to go. So those are qualities that if you can develop for the trial, you'll see God in that. But most of us, or many of us, are listless learners. Are listless listeners. Say that real fast three times. But listless, listless listeners if you're a listless listener, you're like a man who looks in the mirror, and in those days, mirrors were not glass like they are today. They're polished metal. Rich people had gold mirrors, polished gold, or, and poor people had polished metal of some sort. And a, a person who comes to church, listens, and then goes away, doesn't intend to do anything about what's been said, is like a person who looks in the mirror temporarily just glances at a mirror and says, hmm, pretty good. Now off you go. But before you leave the house, you've forgotten what you look like. You might have seen something uh, that you needed to fix before you left the house. Just that glance in the mirror and you said, oh, huh, I've got uh, spinach between my teeth. But before you leave the house, you've forgotten that. So out you go and you're smiling all day long and you've got a piece of spinach right there. Or ladies, you may have uh, uh, done one eyebrow and didn't do the other. <laughs> and you, you glanced in the mirror and said, you know, I better fix that on my... See, I know that ladies can do their makeup in the car at red lights. <laughs> I tell you, they pull that mirror down. Just, it's amazing. <laughs> And it's, it's amazing what they can do in just a little bit of time. But a person who's a listless listener just glances and you may forget before you get to the car that you've got uh, lipstick on the lower lip but not on the upper lip or whatever. The person who does that deceives himself. Now the Bible says uh, that you need... To look in that mirror and uh, uh, look at verse 25. But the one who looks intently, intently, that's the person who studies. But you see, if you just glance at the mirror, you're going to deceive yourself. Actually, the word is miscalculate. That's, that's, that's the way it's defined, miscalculate. It, you'll make a miscalculation. 
One of my favorite stories is about a little boy, timid little fella anyway, but he was called by the teacher. He wasn't good at math. Did y'all ever have to go to the blackboard? I know, I know, I'm old. But how many of you ever had to go to the blackboard and work out a problem in math? Raise your hands, you old people. Raise them up there. If you need some help lifting your arm, ask your neighbor. They'll... Yeah, you go to the blackboard, and boy, if you didn't know those algebraic equations, there you were. And what's the value of N? N is a letter, it's not a number. N doesn't have a value. I never did understand all of that. And so this little boy, nervous, not very good at math. So he went to the board and the teacher gave him a problem to solve. He put his arm up on the blackboard like this so nobody could see, and he started working. The teacher came by and said, after a while, and he's kind of the only guy left, Have, has that ever happened to you? You're the only guy left at the board, and you're still, you, and you get the eraser. And there you are, and the teacher says, Johnny, how are you doing? He said, teacher, ma'am, I'm getting farther from the right answer all the time. That's the word. If you look momentarily at your life in the mirror, you'll make a miscalculation. And in that miscalculation and in the spiritual equation, you'll get farther from the right answer all the time. There are people today who are working at the board and they're getting farther and farther from the right answer all the time. If you do that, you will make a miscalculation. Are you near a miscalculation today? Or are you in the midst of a miscalculation? You've made a decision, but it's, you're feeling the wrong decision. You've tried to work out the equation, and you feel like you've got the wrong answer. So let me ask you to look at the third point, and that's, what's a dedicated doer like? What is a dedicated doer like? Well, he takes off his dirty laundry. That's what the Bible says, that he'll take off the dirty clothes. The Bible uses these terms, filthiness or wickedness. Actually, do you see that last word? To try to show how God thinks about your wickedness, look at the word earwax. Is there anything more disgusting than earwax? Is there? Well, I suppose there are, or is, but I think earwax goes pretty high on the scale of disgusting things. Take it off. So many of us come to church, and a lot, a lot of people stay away from church simply because of this. They said, all they do is make me feel guilty. I don't think that's what we do. I think that's what the Holy Spirit does. Because all of us together probably are feeling guilty enough. Nobody needs to add to our guilt. Nobody needs to build on that. Because we know. See, we know. I said that of a young woman that I know very well, and she's making some bad choices. And I said to a friend of hers, she knows better. She knows better. She knows what's right. Deep down, you see, the Bible says that your heart condemns you. Your conscience that little guy that lives inside of you that says you're on the wrong road, you're on the wrong trail, turn around, quick. Don't be the one that the wolves pull down. The poem says, I wish there was some wonderful place 
called the land of beginning again, where all my heartaches and all my mistakes could be pulled off like a shabby old coat at the door and never put on again. There is a land called beginning again. It's the land of Jesus. It's the land where Jesus is king. And dedicated doers come to Christ and tell Him all they've done wrong and admit it. And I mean get down and, and, and just tell Him everything. And He says, I love you anyway, I forgive you. And it's a land of beginning again. A dedicated doer receives the engrafted word, continues in that word, does the work and finds happiness. That's what James says. 1995. 1995. First Baptist Church of Tucumcari. I was still pastor there for three more years. A fellow came up to me after church and handed me this piece of paper, signed by George L. Copeland. Here's what it says. My mission statement, 1995. January 5th, 1995. As a solemn vow, pledge, and covenant, and as an irrevocable commitment between the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and George Lee Copeland. As a child of God, here's what it says. As a child of God, as a Christian, my goal is to forget what lies behind, to press forward to what lies ahead like Paul, I press toward the goal of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Like Paul, I would desire to die to the law that I might live to Christ. I desire and will that I may be crucified with Christ and that it may be, no longer be I who live, but Christ lives in me and the life that I now live in the flesh I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. I desire more and more to be a disciple and follower of Jesus, to daily take up my cross and follow Jesus. I earnestly desire to be fruitful in bearing fruit for God. I want to be so totally yielded, submitted, and surrendered to Jesus to walk with and to follow Jesus so closely that others see Jesus in me and through me and that there may be some who are in some way inspired to follow me as I follow Christ, and that my life and my example might lead and inspire them to give themselves fully to Christ. I have but one mission, and that is to obey Jesus, who is my commander-in-chief, king, and to obey his command. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, into all the earth, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As a child of God, I will seek to make the most of every given moment, of every opportunity, to be the best I can be, to be all I can be, to do my best, to be all I can be in Christ, and with the help of God, nothing more, nothing less. With help of my God, I shall succeed. With help of my God, I shall do valiantly. Some boast in chariots, some in horses, but I will boast in the name of my God. George L. Copeland. I wonder if he did it. I wonder if 1995 was a banner year for George. I don't know. I ran across this poem, and dads, are you listening? Men in the place... Are you listening? Call Cats in the Cradle. I think it's a song. Cats in the Cradle by Sandy and Harry Chapin. My child arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way. But there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away. And he was talking before I knew it. And he grew. And as he grew, he'd say, I'm going to be like you, Dad. You know I'm going to be like you and the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man in the moon, when you coming home, Dad? I don't know when, but we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. My son, son turned 10 just the other day. He said, thanks for the ball. Dad, come on, let's play. 
can you teach me to throw? I said, not today. I got a lot to do. He said, that's okay. And he walked away, but his smile never dimmed. It said, I'm going to be like him. Yeah, you know I'm going to be like him. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon, little boy blue, and the man in the moon. When you coming home, Dad? I don't know when, but we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. Well, he came home from college just the other day. So much a man, I just had to say, Son, I'm proud of you. Can you sit for a while? He shook his head and said with a smile, What I'd really like, Dad, is to borrow the keys. See you later. Can I have them, please? When you coming home, son? I don't know when. But we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. I've long since retired. My son's moved away. Called him up just the other day. I said, I'd like to see you, son, if you don't mind. He said, I'd love to, Dad, if I can find the time. You see, my job's a hassle and the kids have the flu, but it's sure nice talking to you, Dad. It's been nice talking to you. And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me he's grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man in the moon. When you coming home, son? I don't know when, but we'll get together then, Dad. We're going to have a good time then. Dedicated doers. Continuing the word, we do the work and we find happiness. And then James defines what real religion is. Really religious people. Really religious people. And I don't, I don't really like that term. I've told you before, I'm not a religious man. I'm a Christian man, but I'm not a religious man. But real religious guys and girls control their tongue. They learn that it's easier not to speak than to apologize and try. And I want to tell you something. Let me, let me just give you a clue. You can, in a, a few seconds of time, destroy a relationship. Now, that guy may forgive you. That girl may forgive you. And that it, may, it may be all right to some extent, but it will never be the same. You can, in a moment of time, take a re relationship that's been wonderful and great, and you can destroy it to the extent that you may speak, you may see each other, you may be cordial, but it'll never be the same. The relationship is over to that extent. You'll never have it again. Or you can destroy somebody's trust in you. and They'll forgive you. And they'll never trust you again. Make sense? Religious people control their tongue they care for those who can't reciprocate. They minister to people that won't benefit them in any way. You are and I am required and obligated to help people who have in no way any ability to return that to your coffers. You're to help people who can't help themselves. You're to help people who are helpless. And lastly, you'll constantly seek to be clean. We spent, I, I'm almost through, we spent some time in Brazil. And the streets in the barrio where we were uh, working uh, were dirt. Most of the houses had uh, dirt floors. Go into houses, they'd have a big old TV in the house and chickens roaming around through the house. But when you got ready to go to church, you could wipe your shoes and make sure your pant legs were clean. The ladies always wore dresses. They wore high heels in those dirt roads. I don't know how they did it. 
But the thing they had to do when they arrived at church was they had to wipe the dirt and the manure and so forth off of their shoes or off of their uh, pants legs. They had to stay clean. They came into God's house, first thing they had to do was clean up, make sure that they were, they were clean and not offensive. That's what real religious people do. Let me tell you something. Perfect people don't come to church. Perfect people don't need to come to church. It's sick people like you and me. See, this is not a showcase for saints. It's a hospital for sinners. This is where sinners come to be treated. This is not because... You, see, you don't come to church because you're good. You come to church because you're bad. You're a bunch of dirty, rotten sinners. Does that make sense? So if people say, well, you're, you're such a goody two-shoes. You go to church all the time. No, the fact is I'm bad and I have to go to church. Because left to my own devices, I'd bust hell wide open. I've got to have some help. This is a hospital for sinners. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. A lot has been said today. A lot of the things I've said convict me of my own weaknesses. I'm going to ask you, if you'd like to come while the band's playing, if you'd like to come and pray with me, you're sure welcome to do that. I'd welcome that, of course. But if you just couldn't do that, you just it would be the hardest thing in the world for to get up out of your seat and to walk down an aisle. Then there's a form in the bulletin that you can fill out and every Sunday in the last few Sundays we've had those forms handed to me by the audit team and I've made calls during the week and I'll do the same this week if you'll let me if you'll tell me what's going on in your life if you'll tell me what God's saying to you if you'll tell me that you have made some miscalculations and you're getting farther and farther from the right answer all the time you're going away from God not toward Him He's become a distant friend, a distant acquaintance, but he's not your friend or your brother. He's just somebody you know. And you want to come back. You want to say, that's not where I want to be. We're going to wait just a moment, not very long, because I'm not going to try to talk you into anything. Holy Spirit's job is that, not mine. I'm glad for the Holy Spirit. That's His job to touch you, to draw you, to call you, to let you know where you're, you're wrong, where you're making some mistakes, some miscalculations. Don't be a forgetful hearer. Stand with us, please. I'd like for us to sing together today. We don't normally do that. But the first verse is easy, just as I am, without one plea. It's right there, yeah. Let's just sing together. Sing out. last word and this is the truth uh, it doesn't take a very profound person to know that this is the truth you'll never have another opportunity ever again like today there will never be this group of people together again there will be people who will be here every Sunday but there will never be this particular group of people again and you've had an opportunity today a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Have you ever heard that?
salesman. I don't want to be a salesman. I'm not trying to be. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to do something that will uh, be to your benefit for now and eternity. Quickly, write out your request on that piece of paper in the bulletin. Put it in that feed bucket back there. Tell me on the way out the door. I can always slip away to a bench somewhere and talk to you about whatever's going on in your mind. Thank you and God bless you. Join hands. Let's sing I'll Fly Away. Some glad morning when this life is over.